Well, I'm Bruce Shady and I'm outside and it's cold, but that's a good thing because it's going to give us a chance to try a little demonstration of the physical change of water into ice. But let's talk about it inside where it's a little bit warmer. <sighs> well, it feels good to be back inside. Now, anybody that's lived in the northern part of our country in wintertime realizes that when the temperature gets below freezing, you can have a problem with bursting pipes. And that's what I want to take a look at. So I have several pieces of piping here, and what we're going to do is we're going to fill them up with water, cap them, put them outside, let them freeze overnight, and see if we can get them to break from that change of liquid to solid. So let's see what we have here. All right, let's start with a piece of copper tubing. It's capped at one end, the shutoff valve at the other. I can add water here and then close it and seal the water inside. All right, next we have this steel pipe, one and a half inch diameter. It's got these heavy caps on either end. Get this off here. That's pretty strong stuff. So we'll see how that does. Smaller scale, we have another pipe, which is one inch in diameter. Once again, heavy caps on the ends. Here we go. Now I was going to try this with this elbow. I have end caps for it. We're going to fill it with water and seal it. Either end. And about the same size, one and a half inch, I have this coupling. And we'll see how this does. Now in addition to the piping, I have a few cans of soda. I thought maybe we'd put some of these outside also. To prepare these pieces, I'm going to use some Teflon tape here on these threads. And that's going to give us a watertight seal, and that's going to keep it from leaking when the water starts to become under pressure. There we go, wrap it off, and it's going to get screwed in as tight as I can here. There we go. And I did the same thing with this pipe also. Now I want to use water that's as cold as possible, because that's going to make it more dense. So I filled the bucket up with snow, I'm adding water. And the next step is to submerge the pipe, make sure all the air is out of that in the cap, and put the cap on. There we go. And I'm simply going to hand tighten it as much as I can. And now it's ready. Now we'll go through and perform these same steps for all the other pieces. And the same goes for this piece also. But we're going to make one slight change. Instead of putting it outside, I'm going to wrap it up in this towel and I'm going to stick it into our freezer and let that sit overnight and see how that does versus putting it outside. Okay, I think we're ready to go. All the pieces are filled with cold water. They're capped and sealed. Our next step is to put them outside. Hopefully it's going to get real cold tonight. The water inside is going to freeze and then we're going to see what happens. We'll let the pieces sit here on top of the snow. Now what's going on is that water molecules in a liquid are able to move past each other and get fairly close. But when they freeze, the hydrogen bonds line up, form the water into crystals, and it takes up a little bit more space. So water actually expands as it freezes. It becomes less dense, and we see that if we put a piece of ice into water, it floats. Now back to our experiment. It's 24 hours later. It got down to eight degrees last night. Now let's go out and get the materials. Well, we definitely had some changes. There's the one pipe. And here's the other one. Looks like we broke a couple soda cans. Looks like one shot forward about 15 feet or so. Same thing with that pipe there. Looks like we were pretty successful. All right, now it's time to take a closer look at our results. Now when this end cap broke, the material inside pushed out with such force that it moved this pipe about 15 feet from where I laid it on the ground. To break this cap must have taken a lot of force. It's been estimated that the expansion of this change can exert pressure in the range of about 15 tons per square inch. Now this next piece is the one I put in the freezer. Obviously, it doesn't make any difference whether it's a freezer or we put it outside. As long as water is changing to ice, it's going to expand, and this is the result. Our copper piping didn't hold up so well either. 
It bent the cap out and then put a hole right here at the end. Let's take a look at our coupling. Looks like the coupling itself is okay, but there's a split right here on the end cap. Next, we have our small pipe. And in this case, the brake is actually in the cap itself and it just simply split it right at the end. All right, now for our sodas. First one is Coke, it broke the end off and shot most of the material out. I don't know where the end cap is. Our next one is Diet Coke. It simply popped a tab and I can feel a lot of the material inside is missing. Next we have our Diet 7-Up. Now it didn't pop this can, it simply pushed the top and the bottom out as far as it could. Another Coke can? Doesn't look like this one was bothered at all. Next we have a Diet Root Beer. Most of the soda is missing and here's what the top looks like. Our last soda is a can of Schweppes Diet Ginger Ale. In this case, the can broke on the sides. All in all, this experiment has been very impressive. Now in our next video, we're going to drill some holes into some rocks, add water to it, freeze it, and see if we can get that expansion to cause the rocks to split. This is a process that occurs in nature, and we're going to see if we can repeat that process.